So what I have here is a 25 touring car, Ford Model T. And this engine, uh, for as much as, as I know about the car, which isn't a great deal, uh, this is the original uh, engine to the car. Now these Model Ts were have been mixed and matched over the years. Uh, they were just kept in service as long as they possibly could be in most cases. And so this one is very worn in terms of, uh, you know, all the axles, uh, rear axle is broken now, but also, you know, the, the wheels are literally coming off. We've got lots of uh, slop in all the bearings and, and things. Uh, this engine is my focus today. And uh, when I bought the car, there was they had one, one piston out. I suspect they had pulled it to do exactly what I'm doing today, and that's just to see how the bearing, uh, how the bearing wear was. And it, it looks good on that particular connecting rod. And uh, in the meantime, because this has sat uh, quite a while, that cylinder, of course, has kind of rusted over, but that's no big deal. That'll, that'll hone up nice. The others, like there's no ridge of anywhere. Mind you, I'd, I don't know if these actually have enough compression to, to create a ridge. So the engine is free. Uh, it all turns, the valves open or close. Uh, they had spent, obviously, quite a lot of time soaking everything down and getting everything moving. I, my suspicion is that it probably was stuck. It had sat for a long time. Uh, but basically, today, what I want to do is assess the bottom end of this engine uh, and determine uh, bear, bearing condition on, on, on the mains and the rest of the rod bearings. So... Uh, the oil pan on a Model T is not is not uh, conventional in in a modern sense. The oil pan here, I have another one here. It forms the the bottom structure of the entire engine and transmission uh, assembly. It's all kind of one assembly, shared oil. And so, you know, this right back here to the what they call the fourth main is is this the one oil pan so you can't drop the pan because the pan actually forms the engine mount uh, on both ends right up at the front of the crank and down the side but what they did do was create this inspection cover uh, I'll call it a maintenance cover even and so by taking that off I should be able to pull the bearing caps and uh, inspect the bearings uh, these are a poured bearing, a Babbitt bearing. They don't use shells. And they actually, when they're redone, they're installed with shims uh, between the cap and the, and the block, or the, in the rod cap. Uh, shims that are meant, you know, once there's, once there's uh, looseness in the bearing, you can take a shim out and uh, what they call take up the bearing. Uh, you put some compound in and, and uh, basically reshape it to be tight again. And uh, fairly ingenious. And with a low power engine like this, uh, would last a long time uh, that way if it was maintained properly. I assume like any other bushing or bearing setup, if it, if it was allowed to run with, with play and start hammering, well then it would, it would beat out really quick which probably that happened a lot too back in the day. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the goal today. I want to pull the bottom end, just open it up. Let's have a look at the bearings. All right, I got number one off and I'll just show you here what I found. Not quite what I was hoping to find. As you can see here, I've got this bottom pan off. So we've exposed crankshaft bearings, camshaft you can see. So I pulled the cap off number one. This is the cap. Oops, I'll just throw it on the floor. And uh, there's certainly Babbitt in it, but no shims. It looks like it's been sanded on, which that was, <laughs> that's your next step once the shims are gone, is you just sand the cap. And, oops, that's backwards. 
backwards. To take up the slack, you sand the cap off, and, uh, oh no, that's backwards. No, whatever, it doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, yeah, there's Babbitt, but evidence that it has been maintained as much as it can to this point. So that's too bad, but not... Uh, looking at the condition of the rest of the car, I was not surprising. We'll carry on, see what we find. Aha, uh -huh. well, uh, I pulled two more. I've got the uh, number four connecting rod, which gave me a ray of hope. We got three shims on each side, a thick one, a thinner one, and a thinnest one. Uh, so lots of shims in the back, but as I think about this, this is the way the Model T oils. Uh, the front of the engine tends to be the one that's starved. So that's the first one I pulled was the front, the number one connecting rod. Anytime you're going up a hill with one of these, uh, the car is under load and the front of the engine is getting the least oil of any time it's going to be oiling. So the main driver of the, of the oil system in these is that big magneto flying around and so the rear of the engine is always going to have more oil so anyway i'm not gonna i can't get at the rear main without uh, until it's apart the the flywheel has to be off to get at the bolts for the rear main the mains on a model t uh, have these long bolts and they clamp oh, there's my light they clamp right through the the casting so the bolts aren't threaded into the block, they're actually through the block and then a castellated nut up on top. And so the main, uh, yeah, the, main, the mains are clamped rather than uh, supported by the block, they're actually supporting the, the casting as well. So it's kind of an ingenious system. But this is the center main, no shims in this. And, I'll get a little closer here with my light. You can see the babbit on that bearing is coming apart. It's uh, cracking. There's pinholes in it. So not good shape. I'm starting to think now I know why the guy bailed on it who had it before me. And, uh, so yeah, wasn't exactly happy to see that, but also I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's a 100-year-old car, so it's going to need some messing around. But anyway, I think I've seen what I need to see. I've decided I'm not going to pull pistons, because why would I do that? Then they just lie around getting dirty outside the engine. So I'll throw everything loosely back together, and now I kind of know a little more about where I'm at. I may still just get it running this way. Uh, I may mess around... For an extra year or two and and do it all right we'll see where the path leads this idea of pouring babbitt actually quite intrigues me and uh i'm you may have somebody may have spotted in a i do cast bullets i've got a small setup here for uh for casting bullets i use wheel weight lead for that and so Pouring Babbitt is not entirely unlike casting bullets. There's a little more to it, obviously. Uh, Babbitt is a lot like lead. It's, it's think of it as a really hard lead. Uh, but obviously the prep work and, and having the molds and the right equipment to do it right uh, is quite involved. So, and then the line boring after the fact. So, but the whole process uh, is something that yeah, who knows? I may just, over time, slowly get the gear I need and, and uh, do, the, do that, rebab at the engine. That would be kind of fun. Um, but anyway, that's the Model T for today. I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for, uh, for watching. I say thanks for watching at the end of every video. I'm never going to ask anybody to subscribe to this what I do here because it's just uh, 
I guess I don't, I don't view myself as somebody uh, worth necessarily following. As I've said before, I, I put these up for my own interest and for, for family and friends who want to see what I'm up to, because I am up to some stuff that normal people don't do. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm super surprised that there would be 200 people in the world that would, would want to click on and, and see what I'm doing. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I still have this. Nobody watches these videos. See, and this is, so a few takeaways here. What I'm noticing is, uh, I'll just walk over to the window here because I don't know why, but here I am at the window. So in that barn over there sits, sits my old truck and that gets views. Like it's, it blows me away how many people watch a video of me driving down the road in that beat up old, old truck. And so, I mean, that's where the 200 people come from is people who have clicked on those truck videos which they aren't good videos and it's not a real nice truck. And so it's, it just interests me uh, <laughs> how that happens. But anyway, uh, I haven't abandoned ship on this. I am still, I'm still messing with it. Um, right now I'm on a blacksmith kick again, so I'm busy, busy doing that. And this project is a long-termer, so I putter at this here and there, but I, I know for a fact this old stuff, in terms of YouTube, which I have no aspirations, as I said, in the 100 subscriber uh, extravaganza, uh, I have no aspirations to make my living on YouTube, so I'm not asking anybody, and I never will ask anybody to, to uh, subscribe to what I'm doing, because I don't have a whole lot to teach anyone. At least I don't see myself as a person who does, but uh, but I'm so grateful to everyone else who puts content on YouTube so that you know we can learn to do the things we want to try and do, and uh, so I can show you what I've learned and what I know, even though that's not anything that extremely valuable necessarily to <laughs> certainly not to the average human, uh, but. Uh, but yeah, you're just going to see more of this if you stay subscribed, and, and if you do, thank you. It, it's, I'm, I'm fairly flattered, and, uh, you know, enjoy the ride. It's, it's probably a pretty slow, boring ride, but, you know, it's the ride we're on. So, hey, here it is. But thanks again. Have a great Sunday.